Nadia uses several types of computer storage for her homework and other projects. Five examples of computer storage are given tick to show uh, if the computer storage is primary, secondary or offline. Okay, so first one is solid state drive SST. So that is the secondary storage. Okay, so next one is the Blu-ray disc. Blu-ray disc is an offline storage. Okay, next one is a USB flash memory. It's also an offline storage. Random access memory or RAM. This is a primary storage and ROM is also a primary storage. Okay, so this question is about HTML. Okay, so let's read the question. Five examples are given of structure and presentation. Take to show which example is structure and which example which is presentation. Next, so let's see the first one. So the color applied to a text heading on a web page. So that is the presentation. Okay, and the font style applied to a paragraph on a web page. So this is also the presentation. The placement of a paragraph of a text on a web page. So the placement of a paragraph. So this is the structure. The size of an uh, the size that an image is set to be displayed on a web page so that is the presentation and the last option the placement of an image next to a paragraph of text on a web page so that is structure Andrew wants to produce advertising material for his company and you can use an inkjet printer or a laser printer draw lines to connect each printer to correct statement more than one lines may be used to connect each printer to uh, print e each printer or statement. Okay, so these are the printers inkjet and the laser and these are the statements So let's first read the first statement can uh, print uh, in color So both inkjet and the laser printer can print in colors next one uh, Uses a charge drum to create the printed item. So that is the laser printer uh, uses powder uh, toner. So that is also the laser printer and the last option is creates output line by line using print head. So that is the ink jet printer. Computer memory size is measured in multiple bytes. Four statements about computer memory size uh, sizes are given in the table. Tick to show if the statement is true or false. Okay, so the first statement is the uh, 25 KB is larger than 100. So that is false. 999 MB is larger than 50 GB. That is also false. Uh, 3500 KB is smaller than uh, 2 GB. Yes, that is true. Okay. Next one is uh, 2350 bytes is smaller than 2 KB. So that is also false. Touch screen technologies can be described as resistive or capacitive. Six statements are given about resistive and capacitive technology. Tick to show if statement applies to resistive or capacitive technology. Okay, so let's see the first statement. This technology, uh, this touch screen has multi touch capability, so that is the capacitive. Okay, next one, this touch screen cannot be used while wearing gloves, so that is also capacitive. Okay, next one, third one is this touch screen is made up of two layers with a small space in between, so that is resistive. Let's see the next one. This touch screen uses electrical properties of the human body. So that is capacitive. Okay. And next question is this touch screen is normally cheaper to manufacture. So that is resistive touch screen. And the last option is this touch screen has quicker response time. So we know it's a capacitive. Okay. Six statements are given about touch screen technology. Take to show if the statement applies to capacitive or resistive touch screen technology. So let's see the first statement needs pressure to be applied to create a circuit. So that is the resistive touch screen. Number two, it may not register a touch if the user is wearing gloves. So that is capacitive touch screens uh, more commonly used in smartphones. So capacitive touch screen again, more responsive to more responsive to a touch. Capacitive touch screens are more responsive to touch. Need an electrical field to be changed to the uh, to, to register a touch so yes that is also capacitive touch screens cheaper to manufacture so this is the resistive touch screen are cheaper to manufacture Palmer says that he has a very good internet service provider that provides several services five statements about the ISPs are given 
tick to show if each statement is true or false. So let's see the first statement. So ISP provides access to the internet for the for customers. Yes, that is true. Uh, ISP can determine the maximum bandwidth available for customers. Yes, that is also true. Uh, ISP can monitor the volume of data downloaded by a customer. Yes, that is also true about ISP. Uh, ISP can provide an IP address for the customer. Yes, that is also true. And the last one is ISP can store the con content for all web pages available on the internet. Yo, oh, that is false. Four statements about a von Neumann model for a computer system are shown. Check to show if each statement is true or false. So let's see the first statement. Data and instruction are stored in the same memory unit. Yes, that is true. Uh, number two, control unit manages the operation within the CPU. Yes, control unit is the boss, so it manages everything inside the CPU. Number three, a data and instruction can be fetched into CPU at the same time. So that is false. Okay. And the last option is the control unit is responsible for decoding and instruction. Yes, that is true. Alessandro also uses offline storage to store his data. Three examples of offline storage are Blu-ray, CD, and DVD. Six statements are given about offline storage. Tick to show if each statement applies to Blu-ray, CD, or DVD. Some statements may apply to more than one example of offline storage. So let's see the first statement. So a type of optical storage. So all Blu-ray, CD, and DVD are type of optical storage. Next one has largest storage capacity. So Blu-ray has the largest storage capacity. Uh, can be dual layered. So Blu-ray and the DVD, they both can be dual layered. So it means you can store data on the both sides of the disk. Next one, read using the red laser light. So CD and DVD can, data can be read using the, uh, using a red laser light, okay? Has the smallest storage capacity, so only CD. CD has the smallest storage cap capacity, okay? And the last option is stores data in spiral track. So all Blu-ray, CD, and DVDs can store data, store data in a spiral track. A programmer uses a high-level language to write a computer program. Four statements are given about high-level programming languages. Tick to show if each statement is true or false. Okay, so let's see the first statement. High-level languages need to be translated into machine code to run on a computer. Yes, that is true. High-level languages are written using mnemonics code. No, that is false because uh, assembly language uses mnemonics code and assembly language is a low-level language, not the high-level language. Next option, high level languages are specific to the computer hardware, that is false. Last option is high level languages are portable languages, yes that is true. Six statements are shown about HDDs, SSDs and about flash memory drives. Tick to show which statement apply to each type of storage, some statement can apply to more than one type of storage, okay. So let's see the first statement. It has no moving parts, so, so SSD and USB flash drive does not have any moving part. HDD has a read dried head, okay, so it has a moving part. Next one, uh, it is non-volatile, so all HDD, SSD and USB flash, they are non-volatile, they can still store the data if there is no power. It uses, an, uh, it can use a NAND gate to store data, so that is the SSD, okay, and USB. So these two uses the NAND gate to store data. Next, it it uses magnetic properties to store data, so that is HDD. Uh, next option is it has the smallest physical size, so that is a USB, right? And the last option is it has the slowest read-write speed, and this is the HDD. Genevieve writes a paragraph about a barcode reader. Using the list given, complete the paragraph. Not all terms in the list used to be uh, need to be used. So these are the terms. Okay. So first one is actuators, binary, black, input, microprocessor, output, sensor, storage, and white. So let's start. A barcode reader is an dash device. So a barcode reader is an input device, right? So we have an input here. Oh, uh, where is input? Yes, here. Okay. So it's an input device. 
okay uh, it shines light at the barcode and the light is reflected back the dash bars in the barcode reflect less light than the dash bar so the black bars okay black bars reflect a bar in the barcode reflect less light than the white bars okay so we have those two words here this is white and this is black okay so dash are used to capture the amount of reflected light and then uh, and the different reflection are converted to dash values so sensors right sensors are used sensors are used to capture the amount of reflected light and the different reflections are converted to binary do we have a binary yes we have binary yes Okay, that's it. The following paragraph explain how data is sent securely using TLS protocol. Use the terms to complete the paragraph. Not all terms may need to be used. So these are the terms. Okay, let's see the, the paragraph. The browser requests dash to identify itself. So the browser requests the web server. The web server is here to identify itself by providing its certificate so this is the second term this is sent back uh, this is sent and check uh, is performed to see if it is authentic right so this is authentic where is authentic uh, we have the yeah, first word okay if it is authentic then If it is, the dash sends a dash back to the web server and data transmission begins. So if it is authentic, the browser browser here this one sends a signal, right? Signal, this is signal. Back to the web server and the transmission begins. Tammy connects the computer to her home network. The computer has a MAC address and an IP address. The, the, a paragraph is given about MAC addresses and IP addresses. Complete the paragraph using the list of terms given. Not all, ter not all terms need to be used. So these are the terms, okay, here. So let's read the paragraph. A MAC address is a media access control address. So we have the word control here. A network device uh, has a dash address, so has a unique address, right? Last one. Unique address that can help to identify for the device on the network. An IP address is an internet protocol. It's an internet uh, protocol here. address an IP address can be static or dynamic so we have a word dynamic here okay. that's it customer will use a web browser to access Victoria's website Victoria writes a paragraph of text to explain how the website will be displayed on a customer's computer Use the list of uh, use the list given to complete the victorious paragraph by inserting the correct six missing terms. Not all terms will be used, and these are the term here. Okay, so let's see the first one. The user entered the website URL URL or Uniform Resource Locator. So this option into the address bar. The protocol that is used is uh, HTTPS, right? HTTPS. The URL contain the, uh, contain the domain name. Domain name for the website. Okay, so domain name is here. Second option. This is used to look up the IP address for the company. A DNS server stores an index of IP addresses. Then the, the browser sends 
uh, sends a request to dash as uh, as this is where the files are for the website are stored so sent to the web server right where is the web server here so web server uh, the files are sent back to the browser as html files html files uh, this is uh, interpreted by the browser and the web page is displayed Vanessa writes a, a paragraph as an answer to an examination question about the central processing unit or CPU uh, use the list given to complete Vanessa's answer by inserting the correct six missing terms not all terms will be used so these are the terms okay let's start the CPU process dash and dash so CPU process data and instruction okay so data and instructions instructions an instruction is dash from dash so an instruction is fetched from the RAM random access memory okay RAM into the CPU where it is then decoded first, right? Decoded. Once it has taken, uh, once this has taken place, uh, the instruction is then executed. Okay, that's it. Camille's correctly answer an examination question about a number of internet terms. Six different terms have been removed from Camille's answer. Complete the sentence in Camille's answer using the list given. Not all terms in the list need to be used. So this is the list of words that we need to use to fill in the blank. So let's start. A dash is a program that allow a user to view dash. So a web browser. Browser is a program that allows a user to view web pages. So let's see, this is the second answer and the browser, this is the first, okay? And dash is a company that provides connection to access the dash. So an ISP, okay? ISP or Internet Service Provider is a company that provide, provides the internet, okay? The main dash that governs the, the transmission of data using the internet is HTTP. So the main protocol, the main protocol here is the correct answer that is called HTTP. The dash is provided by the network and given to each device on the network. So the main, uh, the IP address, and let's see we have IP address here. Yes, we have IP address. The IP address is provided by the network and given to each device on the network. Gloria writes a paragraph as an answer to an examination question about accessing a website. Use the list given to complete Gloria's answer by inserting the correct four missing terms and not all terms will be used. So these are the terms here. We have these terms. Okay, so let's start filling the blank. The user enters the URL of the website. The dash uses the DNS server to look up the dash of the website. So the browser. So the first answer is this one. Uses the DNS server to look up for the IP address. So this is IP address. Of the website. The browser sends the request to a web server. So web server, where is this web server? To obtain the website files. The website files are sent as dash that is interpreted by the browser. So the, the web files are sent as HTML. Okay, that's it. 
Blyers write a paragraph about data transmission in her computer science examination. Use the list given to complete the Blyers paragraph by inserting the correct five missing terms. Not all terms will be used and terms can be used more than once. So these are the terms. So let's start. Dash data transmission is when data is transmitted a single bit at a time. So that is the serial data transmission. Dash data transmission is when multiple bits of data are sent all at once. So that is parallel. Okay. Next one, if a user wants to transmit data over a long distance with highest chances of accuracy, dash data transmission should be used. So in this case, longest distance and highest accuracy. So we should use the serial data transmission. If data needs to be transmitted in one direction only, for example, from a computer to a printer, dash data transmission should be used. So in this case, we should use the simplex because in the simplex, we can send data in one direction only. So simplex. If a user has a large amount of data to transmit and this needs to be done as quickly as possible, dash data transmission should be used. So in this case, we should choose the parallel. Okay. That's it. Tammy is buying a new computer that has a LED display. Five statements about LED display are given. Tick to show if each statement is true or false. So let's see the first statement. It is a flat panel display. Yes, that is true. Uh, it creates images using red, green, and blue and diodes. So that is also true. It is not very energy efficient and gives uh, it gives off heat. So that is false. That is energy efficient and gives less heat. It can be used in mobile devices such as smartphone and tablets. Yes, that is true. And the last option is it is a front lit display. That is false. Five description of different input or output devices are, sh are given in the table. Complete the table by stating the names of each input or output device. So let's see the first description. This is an input device that works by shining a light onto the surface of a document. Okay. The light source is uh, automatically moved across the document and the, uh, and the reflected light is captured by mirror, mirrors and lens. So that is a uh, 2D scanner. Okay that we use to scan the document. Next one, this is an input device where a laser or a light source is moved across an object. The width, height and the depth of the object are measured to allow a model to be created. So that is the 3D scanner. Next one, this is a large input device that usually fixed on a wall, uh, uh, fixed to a wall. A user can collaborate the device to make sure the sensor align with the projected image. The user can use uh, either their finger or a special pen to make selection. So that is interactive whiteboard that we use in the um, classes. Interactive whiteboard. Next statement is, um, this is an output device that uses many small mirrors to reflect light toward a lens. This will display an image. So that is a projector. And the last device is, this is an out output device that creates an object by building layers upon layers of material. So that is 3D printer. Data storage can be magnetic, solid state or optical. Six statements are given about data storage. Tick to show if statement applies to magnetic, solid state or optical storage and some statement may apply to more than one type of storage. So let's see the first statement. No moving parts are used to store data. So that is solid state. Okay. 
Next one, uh, pits and lands are used to store data. So that is optical on CDs, DVDs, and Blu-ray. You know, we have pits and lands again, we store the data. Next one is data is stored on platters. So uh, on magnetic, uh, uh, we, we store data on the platters. The next one is flash memory is used to store the data. So that is in SSD or solid state. Parts are rotated to store the data. So in magnetic, we have platers. Okay, that move and also an optical disk. Okay, so these two options are correct for this one. Data can be stored permanently. So on magnetic, solid state, and optical, all those storage uh, can store data permanently. Six statements are given about storage devices. Stick to show if the statement applies to hard disk drive storage or solid state uh, storage. Some statement can apply to both. Okay. So let's see, it has a limited number of read write cycles, so that is SSD. It chooses magnetic properties to store data, so that, that is HDD. It has moving parts, so HDD has a moving part, but SSD doesn't have any moving parts. It is a non-volatile storage, so both HDD and SSD are non-volatile. Uh, it can be used as external storage device to backup data, so both can be used as external storage device to backup the data and it uses flash memory to store data so SD uses flash memory to store data six statements are given about the components tick to show if each statement applies to the elu cu or the ram some statements may apply to more than one component okay so let's see the first statement store data and instruction before they enter the central processing unit so ram store the data before it entered the cpu Next one contain a register called accumulator, so that is ALU that um, uh, contain a register name a name accumulator. Okay. Next one manages the transmission of data and instruction to the correct component, so this is the responsibility of CU or control unit. Okay. Next one uh, contain uh, within the CPU ALU and CU they contain within the CPU RAM is a external component. Okay. Next one, uh, uses the data bus to send data into or out of the CPU. So, so RAM uses the data bus, okay? And also ALU uses the data bus, okay? Next one, carries out the calculation on data. So that is the responsibility of ALU, arithmetic and logic unit. So the correct answer is ALU. Four statements are given about printers. Tick to show whether each statement applies to an inkjet printer or a laser printer. So let's see the statement number one. Uh, it uses a rotating drum to transfer the image to the paper. So that is the laser printer. Uh, uses powder toner. So also the laser printer uses the powder toner. Next one, uh, uses nozzles to spray droplets on the paper. So that is inkjet printer. And uh, last option is uses a print head mechanism that moves side to side. So that is also inkjet printer. Dandy is a number system that is used by the programmers. Tick one box to show whether Dandy is a base 2, base 10, or base 16 number system. So we know Dandy is a base 10 number system. So the correct answer is base 10. Next question is, a tick one box to show if a sensor is an example of an input storage device or output device. So sensor is an input device. So the first option is correct. Tick to show if each statement applies to a 3D scanner, barcode reader, or a quick response code reader. Some statements apply to more than one type of device. So let's see the first statement. Uh, uses position and alignment markers uh, for orientation when scanning. So that is a QR code reader. Next one, uh, scans the shape and appearance of an object. That is a 3D scanner. Next one, uh, uses a reflected light uh, uh, from a laser to convert a black and white pattern into binary. So that is a barcode reader and also the QR code reader. Next one, can often be built into a, an electronic point of sale uh, terminal, for example, a supermarket checkout. So uh, both barcode reader and the QR code scanner are there. Uh, last one is, uh, it's, it is an example of an input device so 3d scanner is an input device barcode reader is also an input device and qr code reader is also an input device